So now that we've gone through a bunch of other mono operators, including concurrency and scheduling, including blocking, including the ones having to do with error handling, let's go ahead and turn our attention to case study EX2, and I've split this up into two parts. So part one of this case study is going to apply all these operators we've seen in the background to create, reduce, multiply, and display big fraction objects asynchronously rather than synchronously. And you can find the example here at this link. And it's going to demonstrate both fully asynchronous as well as hybrid asynchronous synchronous models of computation. And so let's go ahead and take a look at that example. So we're now in the Mono EX2 case study project. Let's go quickly take a look at the driver program. As you can see here, it's got a bunch of methods. I think it has four methods, maybe five methods. So we're going to look at a few of them here in this part one, and we'll come back and look at the other ones in part two, just to keep the discussion concise and the video short and succinct. And so as usual, we go ahead and we register a bunch of these methods with the async task barrier. And once they're registered, we're then going to go ahead and tell the async task barrier to run all the tasks. Now this time, unlike the first case study where everything was done synchronously, this time all the tasks are going to run asynchronously. So they're going to run in the background and they're going to run in background threads. So they will all run concurrently and we'll get back a mono which the calling thread, the main thread, will use to block until all the background threads are done with their thing. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple examples here. I think we look at the first two here. So as before, we have a big fraction called S unreduced fraction, which is going to be this large numerator, large denominator. Nothing really different from before. And then down here, we're going to make ourselves a callable, which we call S call. And you can see what callable does is it creates two big fractions. And these big fractions, as you can see, if you look at the code, these are what the big fractions are designed to do. And so we make two big fractions and we multiply those two big fractions together. So that's the computation we're going to be performing. We define yet another field called S block time, which is the amount of time to wait in the blocking call, the block call on mono for the computations to complete before we give up and go on. And we're going to wait basically for half a second, which is plenty of time in this case. It doesn't take very long to multiply two big fractions together of this size. Here is test fraction reduction async one. And as you can see here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a big fraction that will reduce the unreduced fraction. And we're going to use subscribe on to do that processing in a background thread returned by dot single. And then we're going to go ahead and log the results. And this is interesting because you're going to see when we look at the logs, these logging results are being done in a background thread now, not in the foreground thread. After we log it, we convert it to a mixed string, also done in the background. And then we go ahead and display the big fraction, the mixed big fraction, also in the background thread. And the last thing we do here is we return an empty mono by calling dot then. And when that is triggered, that's an indication to the async task barrier. This asynchronous computation has finished. And therefore, if it's the last asynchronous computation that the async task barrier was waiting on, then the async task barrier can, can also finish. Let's take a look at test fraction reduction async2. Uh, similar idea. Oh, notice, by the way, we're using string buffers now, not string builders. And that's because string builder is not thread safe, but string buffer is thread safe. And we're running these things in background threads. So that's why we use string buffer. Once again, we do a reduction of a big fraction in the background using subscribe on. This time we are a little bit more concise. We log these things with our log big fraction. Um, we convert it to a mixed string. And here's where it's different from the previous one. This one's going to block for up to half a second, which is what S block time is defined to be, as you can see here. It's going to block the calling thread until the computation is done in the background. And then it's going to go ahead and append the result to the string buffer and display that string builder, rather not string buffer, string builder as a string. And it's going to return an empty mono. You can see S void M is just an empty mono. And that's because we're done. We, we blocked until we were finished. So this is actually ultimately a synchronous call from the testing point of view, but it was doing asynchronous processing in the background. Okay, uh, let's see. 
And just for kicks, let's talk about test fraction, multiplication, cullable. Oh, sorry. Th th those are the things I wanted to talk about in this particular example. So let's run this example up here. And uh, we will look at the first two results. So if you see the results here, test fraction reduction async 1, test fraction reduction async 2. You can see that for test fraction reduction async 1, all the computation and the results were printed in the background. So everything was printed in the background thread, thread 20. In contrast, for test fraction reduction async 2, some of the computation was done in the background thread, but the calling thread is the one that ultimately printed out the final results, and that's because it was blocking until the, until the results were done. It called the block operator. So that's an example of sort of this hybrid asynchronous-synchronous combination. So that's a very powerful feature that you get. And then we'll talk about the other examples here in the next part of the case study.